Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul. Uh, we are gonna continue uh, with part two of our um, fuselage build for the St. Croix Models Long Easy. So at this point, uh, what we need to do is to begin the process of installing the servos for the, um, uh, for the nose gear, as you can see up, up front right there, okay? Uh, but before we do that, we need to talk batteries. Now, right off the bat, um, in this area here is where you would normally have the servos that would be used for throttle if you're using nitro and for steering and also to, uh, to work the canard as well, which is going to be up in this area in here. However, because we're converting this over to electric, we need to use this open area right here where my finger is. Uh, for the battery. So I picked up a battery tray uh, from F3Aunlimited.com. That's F3Aunlimited.com. They've got a couple different uh, sizes and styles. Uh, this is their 6S. They make a 10S. They also make a really nice removable metal battery tray and everything's laser cut. Uh, now this motor that we're using is the E-Flight um, Power 46 brushless, as you can see here. This motor will go up to a 5S, and that's what you want to use. Now, Great Plains make has their Rimfire 46, but that does a 6S. And while I would love extra power, the issue is space, and I'll show you what I mean. So right off the bat, you can see here, this is a uh, former uh, F3. When the wing sits on the fuselage, it's going to sit flush with this former, as evidenced by the wing hold-down blocks you can see here. So the problem is height of the pack in addition to the thickness of the tray. So the way this tray works is that it comes with these uh, carbon fiber rods, two of them, and they are then passed through these holes here, like so. And then what you would do is you would then drill holes on opposite sides of the fuselage and insert the carbon fiber rod and that's gonna hold the, the battery tray in place which is great and they work extremely well. I've used them a bunch of times. They're fantastic trays and, and they really will actually hold up to an 8S, believe it or not. But anyway, the problem is the height of here, this part, plus the strap, plus, as you can see there, the Velcro. You've got to factor that in. So when I take this tray and I put it in the plane like so with the battery, let me turn the fuselage a little bit. Let me see if I can get this sitting up, just up, there we go. Upright as best I can. Okay, if you look very carefully, let me zoom in a little bit and pan a little bit. You'll notice that the height, it is literally almost, actually let me turn it to the side, a little more visible that way. You can see it's literally almost at the highest point. Now I'm putting a 5S in there, so that's a problem. So I realized what we have to do is to go through and to actually take this piece here and not glue it in place, okay? And instead use some quarter inch spruce and we're gonna put a piece this way and then a piece this way and glue it to the, uh, to the floor of this area of the fuselage, okay? So you can see the thickness difference here, if I put this side by side, it's not much, but it's enough. Oops, let me see, there we go. It's enough to where you can see that it's not quite as thick, okay? So that's what we're looking at at this time. And we'll talk more about servo installation in just a little bit. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, let me show you what we've got here. We took one quarter inch spruce and we've glued it into the bottom of the battery tray in three positions. As I mentioned previously, we've got to keep it as, uh, as close to the bottom of the fuselage as possible. So we're epoxying these in place and then we'll epoxy the tray in place as well. Now, I know there might be some concern, well, what about being able to move the battery forwards and backwards? Well, we will be able to a little bit, but we've got to keep some space up in here because we're going to put some of the servos to do some of the steering. And, uh, and I have an idea for the canard, but we'll talk about it with regards to the servo, but we'll talk about that a little, a little later on when we get to that, uh, that portion of the build. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, I've just temporarily set the, uh, 
the battery tray in here with the battery. I, I've gone ahead and I've glued on those uh, three quarter inch spruce rails. And I just wanted to get an idea of what the battery would look like. Two straps on there and uh, see if, as it relates to the height. And if you look, I'm gonna come on down and notice how it just disappears. You can see the battery as we look at it here. Let me zoom in in relation to F3 here. Notice how it's sitting that much lower. So that's perfect. It's gonna clear the wing when the wing is in place. Let me zoom out a little bit. When the wing is in place and um, and it will not get in the way. And even when we add the extra cell onto here to make it a 5S, uh, we're still gonna have the ample clearance as you can see. So we're good. Everything is great. So that's perfect. We're gonna glue it in place and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the servos and we're gonna talk about those in a little bit. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, we are about to mount the good old nose cone. Yay. Now, the nice thing about this nose cone is that it uh, is marked top. What I like about this version, as opposed to the one I built back in 83, was uh, the original one back in 83, it, it, or uh, 84, excuse me, it, um, it was just a solid block of wood, and you had to shape it. But I guess the, this must have been a later kit, and they went ahead and they shaped it for you. So it makes things much, much, much easier. Now, what would you want to do is we have the bolts here that are holding the uh, the nose gear in place, as you can see there uh, inside the plane. Uh, you need to go ahead and mark off and, and clear out a location of where these bolts are going to be. And um, just a simple drill will do the trick. So a very simple way of doing it is just take the nose comb, place it here so it's resting on top of the bolts, as you can see and just mark off the locations as you can see. So do that on all four sides. Do it on, I'll do it like this as well. And then of course, come over here and do it uh, on this side. Oop, do it on this side as well, okay? Uh, and then of course, do it on the top as well, as you can see, okay? Anyway, so once you hold it up there, then go ahead, draw the lines, connecting the top and the bottom and the side to side, and then you can and then you can see the little squares, and that marks the location where the bolts most likely will be. Because we're going to use a relatively large drill bit, uh, which is going to be... Anyway, oh, here we go. It's going to be a uh, 3 8 uh, drill bit is what we're going to use to open up that hole so we can uh, easily get the bolts uh, in there. So just keep that in mind. Now, you, you can't use any lock nuts on these because if you ever have to remove the nose gear, you, you won't be able to get the lock nuts because that nose cone is gonna be permanently in place. So just keep that in mind. So some blue Loctite will do the trick uh, when you go to uh, mount the uh, nose gear bracket. All right, more to come. All right, as we continue on. So uh, we hollowed out our holes here. Uh, wide enough and deep enough uh, to accommodate the bolts here. And I did one other little thing. So we want to get this nose cone centered, not only side to side, but top to bottom. And if you'll look very carefully at the plans here, notice how the bottom part of the nose cone is flush with the bottom sheeting, whereas the top, there's about a one eighth inch uh, gap there above F1. And that's what you want. So, so to help accommodate that, what I did is I took a couple 1 16th inch, uh, excuse me, 1 16th thick balsa pieces, as you can see here, just tack glued them in place and we can always sand them away, you know, when we're done. And that gives a perfect fit. Let me see if I can put this on there with one hand, put this nose cone on. Gives a really nice flush look on the bottom, which is perfect. And so we'll glue the nose cone and we'll get it centered side to side and glue the nose cone in place. All right, more to come. All right, friends, we got our nose cone in place, and now we're gonna go ahead and start working on our nose gear and getting our nose gear servo installed. More to come. On the wheels. Starting to look like a fuselage. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, let's show the setup that we have. So there's our thin wing servo. Let me zoom in, our high-tech thin wing metal gear servo. 
and obviously optimally would probably have been put it better to put it in this section of the aircraft here but the issue is there's going to be a piece of wood across here and the only open spot is going to be this narrow space here where the canard is going to be mounted and will be removable so i have to make sure the servo is as accessible as possible but is as flat as possible so it'll stay away from the battery as much as possible this works really well. What we're using right there is a Hangar 9 titanium um, push rod. These are Dubro Ball Links 256 rod. I mean, for a 440 push rod, but 256 socket head, which always works. It's always the best combination when you're using uh, these Ball Link connectors. Um, and you can see it works perfect. So just right, and more than enough throw in the wheel in this direction. We need to do some fine tuning, but outside of that, it works perfect. Used a little CA. We're using those same um, those same little servo holders that we used in the wing and the winglets to install the thin wing. We're using it here. Use some thin CA to hold it in place, and that's more than enough. All right, so that's set. We're going to move on to the rest of the instructions, and let me show you where I'm at right now. For those that are following along, we just finished up, oops, there we go. We just finished up 32, so now we're going to be going ahead and moving on with the remaining instructions that are there. All right, folks, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, let's talk about what we're seeing here. So we're about ready to mount the canard. Now, the one, one of the nice things I do like about the canard is that it's just bolted in place and you can see we've got our hard point here and then of course we have our plywood blocks that we uh that we glued in previously you can see them right there now one of the things you're going to want to do is to create a notch right there you can see it on that side there you can also see it in the distance on the opposite side let me just come over here so you can see it you're going to want to take create a notch what i did to create the notch was quite simple just take a little bamboo stick and I've got some 80 grit on there and you just wind up putting it in and putting it in the hole and just sanding it back and forth and what you're looking for is you want to make sure that when the canard is in place that when you move the elevator it should move oh, pardon my hand there it should move freely all the way down, and then of course going through and all the way up as well, as high as it'll go, okay? And then you're good to go. All right, so we're gonna work, work on getting this centered. You can see it's a little, it's a little off, not by much, just a little bit in terms of center line. So we may have to do a little bit of sanding on the elevator, but nonetheless, that's okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we are looking now we just did step 33. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to step 34. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, we have the canard mounted. Yay! Whoop, whoop. Anyway, um, so what we did is these are 632nd uh, socket heads, one inch long. That's all you need. And of course, we've got number six washers on there. And uh, just remember that when you go through and you tap the blocks underneath the hardwood blocks, um, use a hand tap, which is what this is right here, okay? Don't use your drill, use a hand tap so you don't strip out the new threads. And make sure that you just put just a little couple, couple drops of thin CA in there, give it a little bit, wait for it to dry, and then re-tap it again with 632nd, okay? The holes in the canard, just a friendly reminder, uh, they are um, they are uh, um, enlarged to uh, five thirty second. So five thirty second in the canard, and you've got um, uh, seven sixty four holes in the hardwood blocks uh, down there. Okay. Anyway, so the canard is basically done. We uh, in terms of mounting. Now we're gonna focus on the wood in this section and up in here uh, in between the canard and the nose. Let me go ahead and give you a quick shot of the plans 
to show you what I'm referring to. Look, you'll see right there where it says half inch top sheet. And then if you look right there where it says one eighth inch top sheet cross grain, that's what we're gonna focus on for right now. And then we need to get some scrap and that scrap is then mounted uh, to the top of the canard, which you'll see right there between the one eighth inch top sheet, uh, top sheet cross grain and the half inch top sheet. So that's gonna be our focus. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, let's uh, talk about some of the things we got going on here. So uh, we've added our top piece right here. Let me give you a shot of the plans real quick. I know we did it just a second ago, but just real quick, let me just show you what we're, what we're working on. So we're working on uh, this piece here and this little piece right up in here. Um, so we went ahead, we got this piece in here. Uh, we used the template of F2 for the curvature. And you see you got a pretty good accurate curve right there. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, and just some minor sanding that needs to be done, some final sanding. Then we've got the piece up here, which we're going to go ahead. We need to add a little bit more, a sixteenth of an inch on here, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this one sixteenth inch piece right here and just kind of fit it on top. That'll help get it so it's nice and flush with the nose comb. And then we just need to go ahead and now build a piece that's going to fit right on here on top of the canard. So anyway, that's where we're at at this time. Uh, as soon as we get this piece in place and set, then we're going to go ahead. This will take the canard out, out, off, of, off of the plane, and we're going to start rounding some corners, getting rid of a lot of this excess here at the bottom. So this will look much, much better in just a little bit. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, we have our top piece on, on, the, on the plane. We've got it nice and rounded, smooth, looks great, matches F2, which is fantastic. We got our little one eighth inch piece here, which also is also rounded off ever so nicely. And we started rounded off some of the nose comb, but we'll finish that up later on once we get everything else taken care of. The next focus is we're gonna be putting our canard back in place. We're gonna take some of the scraps that we have here and we're gonna be building up the wood. It's gonna sit on top of the canard. You can see it right there. Um, so we're gonna do that next. So more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, we are focusing on building the block that's going to go over top and be glued to the canard. So a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, um, we can't just put a block on top. I mean, I suppose we probably could, but there's a couple things to consider. First of all, the you have, you have an, an angle from the side whereby it, it's going down this way. And you also have to consider that you've got this 1 16th inch plywood piece. So... Uh, Plus, you have to drill a couple holes as well. So we're having to sort of build the wood up. So we have our front piece built up here. We have our rear piece built up. This is all 1 8 inch balsa. The front piece is 1 8 inch uh, on the bottom and 1 16th on the top. So it fits just between that uh, plywood piece and the nose and the, uh, the front piece here. So now we've got to build up a piece in between. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. And we've got to be able to drill some holes. And then what we'll do is we'll glue all that together. And the other thing we have to consider is we have to shape it because it's got to be shaped this way, uh, okay, this way. And it's also got to be shaped this way. So you can't just glue it on there because otherwise it would be very difficult to shape. So we're just going to do it a little bit at a time. We will glue all these pieces together. And I think what will probably happen is I'll just lift this piece off, begin the shaping process, and periodically put it back on until we get the perfect shape. And then we'll glue it permanently on, on, the, uh, on the canard. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue to update, we've built our, our built-up block. I know it doesn't look like much, but when I'm done shaping it, it's gonna look really great. So uh, here's the before shot. What we did to, to compensate for this little gap here caused by this piece, I went ahead and put a couple 1 16th inch pieces of wood there, and that helps fill that in. So once we get this shaped, then we'll go ahead, we'll get this glued back on top of the um, of the canard. One of my biggest concerns, though, is being able to remove the canard because, as I mentioned before, if you look right there, uh, you can see the notch that we had to cut out for the, um, for the uh, canard push rod. And I'm thinking that this canard may not be removable unless we go through and make a cut across here and glue it onto here. But we won't know just yet until I go through and get the shape. So anyway, it's ready to go. We're gonna work on shaping and more to come. 
All right, friends, as we continue your update, I got to say I'm very proud of this one. So here's our wonderful block of sticks that we had there, the conglomerate of sticks. It didn't look like it was going to shape in anything. And you can see you threw some good old uh, sanding belt and some sanding and testing the fit and all that. We get this beautiful shape, and you can see it just fits ever so nicely on the plane, just like that. There we go. And... You can see how nicely it fits as we look at it from the front. Nice and smooth. And my favorite is, of course, is from the side shot. You can see how well it blends in with those other pieces that we've added there. Let me zoom in a little bit. Blends in very nicely. There you go. So anyway, all right. We do have to do one thing, though. And I thought this might be an issue. So the problem is, as we know, the canard is supposed to be removable. But, you know, you've got the, let me zoom in a little bit. If you look carefully, there's our wonderful metal piece. I guess you could call it whatever you want to call it. That, that horn that uh, 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 is glued to both elevators and it passes through both sides. Well, the problem is, is that when you go to try to remove the, the canard, and I haven't glued this in place yet, obviously, you can't, because in order to get the canard out in its current configuration, you have to take it, you sort of have to tilt it, uh, the front end up, and slide it out this way. Well, that's not going to work, because you can see how close the wood is here. So, simple fix. What we're going to do, let me zoom in again. If you look at the notch right there that we cut out for the horn, we're going to draw a line at the far end of the notch, and we're going to cut this portion off here, and we're going to take it, and glue it to the rear portion. That way, we can take the canard and lift it up. Now, I got to say, I do like the removable canard. It is quite nice because it does make it easier to get at the nose wheel. If I never needed to fix anything, I can say that uh, that's not so much the case with our quarter scale version there of the Long Easy. Although the uh, difference is, is that there is a fiberglass nose on that one which is removable, which does make the accessibility to the um, nose gear much easier. Anyway, so with that, we're going to go ahead, we're going to do that real quick, and more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, you can see we cut that little piece off from here, as mentioned previously. So, um, therefore, it is... Uh, it's all glued in place, and it works perfectly. Lifts right off, and uh, we also opened up the holes, as you can see there, for the uh, socket heads with the washer to hold the uh, canard in place. So this part of the build is done. We're going to go ahead and start focusing on sanding and rounding the edges. So this will be the end of part two, and we're going to go ahead and start up part three in just a little bit. All right, more to come.